Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and thanks a lot for getting me here to talk. Uh, I'm going to give you a, a whirlwind tour of the challenges of marketing in China. I've got to catch a flight in about an hour, so I hope I'll be on time, and I hope uh, I'll keep you interested at least for 15 minutes. You just heard from my friends in the online world, uh, and you've had some great facts up there. Uh, my colleague from Baidu talked about uh, consumers in China and buying cheap shoes. Yep, he's wearing a pair of Nike. Please do trade up. Um, <laughs> Adidas is a premium brand, and uh, I'm sure you're rich enough to buy some. Okay, so welcome, welcome to the China Challenge. This is no news to you, right? If it is news to you, go back to school, leave this hole now. But what does this actually mean to all of us, okay? Population, the globe just turned 7 billion a few weeks ago, as you know. China is 20% of that population. China has the world's largest city, Chongqing. 32 million estimated. And 200 million people live on less than one US dollar a day. So not, not so rosy in China. There's still a lot of development there. 43 billion chopsticks a year are used. It's a lot of rain for us. It is the world's largest car market and PC market. And Jeff just talked about Apple. It will soon be Apple's largest market in a few years to come. And by 2025, China will have 10 cities bigger than New York. Now, that's great opportunity. Jeff talked about change. And yes, the China challenge is not about scale. It's about pace. 10 years ago, if you were in Shanghai and you looked at uh, the Pudong skyline, it was just residential houses. Look at it today. It, it actually is um, the skyline of the city. And the fact on how China will change in the next five years is 50% of China's millionaires, USD millionaires, who will be millionaires in five years, have actually next to nothing today. So China is uh, changing at a very rapid pace. So China is big and it's fast, but it's also complex. Great waves of human change transforming China's society and economy. We talked about the one-child generation. They are coming to the stage. They bring them a sense of enthusiasm, a sense of pride, a sense of purpose, and fierce impatience. And to understand this, the human aspect of what is happening in China, you've got to think about the generation born in the 1960s and 70s, late 60s and early 70s, people like me. I'm giving you my age now. Uh, by the time they near the end of their lives, those people will have experienced more change than almost anyone has in the history of humanity. What took 20 to 30 years of consumer change in Western developed markets takes less than 10 in China. And of course, there's a generation whose parents had very little. They are now getting a lot, from bicycle to luxury cars, mouse suits to high fashion, isolation to global information, all in one step in a very short period of time. And with that change has come consumers who want to create an identity. They want to be different. Consumers that have sensed individuality. And they want brands. Brands they can connect to, brands that help them identify and create personalities. But the geography is shifting from the East Coast, where the commerce is today, to the West. From cities which you're all familiar with, Shanghai, Beijing, Guangzhou, to metropolitan areas in the West that one doesn't really hear of. And it is here that the scale becomes complex and the challenges for us marketers. In just four years' time, China will be approaching 600 cities which have over 100,000 or more affluent middle-class consumers. Some of those cities will have a population and economy that outrank many European countries of today. And so China's middle class is on the rise. 
The next decade will bring 270 million consumers into the segment. China, by 2020, will have the top middle-class consumer market. And by 2030, China will account for 18% of global spending. If we talk about the lower-tier city opportunities, local brands still outnumber the international brands in the lower-tier cities. They introduce huge growth opportunity for multinationals, but it will be crucial for them to understand the attitudes and the spending behavior of the consumers. Jeff talked about tier one to tier six cities. It is, it's different from Scandinavia to Italy. You can't treat, market, uh, you can't treat China with a one size fits all approach. The lower cost of leaving means more discretionary income. In fact, some small cities, consumers are able to save 30% or even 50% of their monthly, monthly income, and they spend more money on apparel and shoes than their counterparts do in Shanghai today. Now, of course, with the change, the profile of our consumer also changes. And I want to highlight three trends. Firstly, brand association, there are no prizes for status values. People want to be recognized, so they buy brands. Secondly, there's a constant flux of the relationship between consumers and the origin of brands. And finally, in consumer, consumers are wanting to buy brands because they're recognized as tangible success. I've arrived. I'm wearing a brand. Tiger Mum. This picture speaks a thousand words. The youth are under huge pressure to succeed in the China marketplace. But they yet don't want to be coined as self-centered and independent. They want to be known as the best, as innovative and creative. So at the same time, we must recognize they want to be individuals. And of course, in almost any category that you guys are working on, you can think of the explosion of choice and competition. As it says, we are all fighting for the attention of consumers. There is also a struggle for their personal association, and there is no loyalty. Quite simply, quite simply, what happens in the minds of the people we are discussing will determine the fate of our companies in the next years to come. You want a marketing challenge? You've got it. It's China. Now, of course, one of the biggest errors in addressing China is that people are not all the same. One country, two worlds. Therefore, you need two different go-to-market strategies. In the higher tier cities, it is as mature as Western cosmopolitan cities. In the lower tier cities, they're like emerging markets. So your go-to-market strategies have to be fundamentally different from each tier of city as they evolve from emerging to developing to mature. So let's talk about the consumers. For the higher tier youth, Consumption is part of the personal identity. For lower tier, it's a sense of belonging. For higher tier youth, it's about being individual and being cool. For the lower tier, it's about being cool but being part of something. The higher tier youth demands stimulation, stimulation whereas their counterparts crave variety. And I just mentioned the two groups see brands very differently. Higher tier youth are seeking individuality and buy brands to express what they want to be, and the lower tier want to trade up from the local brands to international brands, which are a status symbol. So how does Adidas win the hearts and minds of the China consumer? The answer is a combination of research, focus, and desire to win. It's simple. We must understand to connect to our consumer. Earlier this year, Adidas launched its biggest and most significant brand campaign in the brand's history. This campaign allowed the brand to show the breadth and depth of the three sub-brands it offered. Our objectives were to create awareness for the brand and to reinforce loyalty by engaging all consumers. On this level, we are talking to the Chinese consumer simply as a global citizen. Let's watch the commercial.
So let's talk about China's future. Everyone is talking about this, especially the APEC leaders in Hawaii over the weekend. We have barely begun to contemplate the full implications of China's rise, culturally, environmentally, military, ethically. Our whole world would change in our generation. And just to emphasize, by 2020, China will be the world's largest economy. Indeed, if we judge the economy on the basis of spending, how far the money in your pocket will get you in buying everyday goods, China will be the largest economy in just two or three years' time. And as China gets older in the next decades, we need a much more sophisticated understanding of the 50-year-old. As we all know, the China consumer is getting older. And all too often, we combine the various groupings that come under this category. Is a 55-year-old CEO the same as an elderly person who is in care? The aging population does pose enormous social and political changes, but there's a new generation and a new market of time-rich consumers which will be available for brands to connect to. What we call the empty nesters of today will have huge wealth in the future. So China is getting older, and the youth will be living in places such as India and Indonesia. However, the China retirees will make up the continent of Europe. Right now, China makes up about 10% of the world economy. By 2030, it will be 25%. And by 2050, the Chinese economy could be three times the size of the US. And those retirees will be rich. By 2030, income per head would have risen from just 4,000 USD to 21,000 USD. Just think what the consumer power unleashed upon the global economy will mean for all our futures. But of course, economies do not grow in isolation. In the past four, year, four years, the renminbi has appreciated 25% against the US dollar. What will happen in the next four years or the next 10 years? And if one wants to remain winners, we will be the ones who have to adapt to change. Our companies, our brands, our products need to remain relevant. And those who succeed will be those who follow the Chinese consumer on his or her journey to greater prosperity. It's not about their wallet. It's about their hopes and aspirations. It's about how their lives are changing as their country forges ahead. And that is our approach at Adidas. Yes, quality is a competitive advantage. Brand equity counts. But we need to constantly innovate and remain relevant. But ultimately, it's actually coming down to putting the consumer at the heart of everything we do. Listening to them, understanding them, not just selling to them, but serving them, making real connections, and winning our place in their affections and in their hearts. If we don't, we will lose them. You will lose them. Just like we see today, many local brands are facing huge challenges as they lose relevance with consumers. It's an amazing challenge. It's an amazing opportunity for me as well. And one thing is for sure, we'll have to work all together to learn from one, one another if we want to remain at the top and be successful. Thank you for your time and have a great day.